Wow, what a, what a group. Look at that quarterback. Oh, I want to be the agent of that tall, handsome quarterback, huh? Six foot seven. They say great athlete, and he's accurate. That's nice. Great job. And you're 18? Boy, that's some fun. You got a good future. Good future. Congratulations. That's fantastic. And, Coach, congratulations. I mean, the whole thing with Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. And, Thank Coach, you. you. What a job, huh? Thank you, sir. Thank you. What a job. What a job, Coach. So, thank you all. We had a little something different. You know, we had uh, to make a decision. We could have seen you in about two months, and I know a lot of you are off to all sorts of camps, and they're all checking you out, and you're going to be wealthy as hell in some cases. In other cases, <laughs> in other cases, you're going to be coming back, and you're going to have another great year. I don't know if you can ever do 15 and 0. I hear that's the first time, right? Yes, 15 sir. and 0. Yes, sir. Has that ever happened before? I don't think so. So I don't know, but you'll do as good, right? You'll do as good. But so I had a choice. Do we have no food for you? Because we have a shutdown. Or do we give you some little quick salads that the first lady will make along with along with the second lady, they'll make some salads. And I said, You guys aren't into salads. Or do I go out, Lindsey Graham and Tim Scott? Do I go out and send out for about one thousand hamburgers? Big Macs. <laughs> So we actually did. We bought 1,000 Burger King, all American companies. Burger King, Wendy's, and McDonald's. We have Big Macs. We have Quarter Pounders with cheese. We have everything that I like that you like. <laughs> and I know no matter what we did, there's nothing you can have that's better than that. Right? <laughs> and so we ordered. We literally have. And I don't know. Have they started uh, eating and devouring? Have you? I wanted to see. So it was piled up a mile high. I just wanted to see what was left. I saw it at the beginning. How much is left back there? How much? They go, not much. <laughs> well, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. We're truly thrilled to welcome to the White House the 2018 College Football National Champions, the Clemson University Tigers. Very famous team right now, the way you're playing. Very famous team. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We had such a wonderful time two years ago. I got to know your president. I got to know your coach. And uh, very special people. Really very special people. What a job you've done, I'll tell you what. And coach, what a job you've done. Very, very unusual. You know, there are other teams with a lot of talent. And they're watching us tonight on live television. You get a lot of laughs. Tonight. They're watching us and they're saying, we'll get them next year. Now, maybe they will, but I don't think you think so, Coach, right? You feel good about next year, right? Yes, sir. How many are coming back next year? Uh, enough. We enough. <laughs> They'll have a, a couple of new ones coming in, Nobody's I'll bet. Gonna feel sorry uh, nobody's going to feel bad. That's good. Well, we're going to have you back, and you're going to be back. So, and I said that to you last time, but last, last year we skipped a year. But I said to the coach last time, I said, uh, you'll be back. And it turned out to be pretty soon. To the university, President Jim Clements, Board Chairman Smythe McKissick. Where is Smythe? Come on, Smythe. you got to get up here, Smythe. Come on. I mean, you are the chairman. Dan Radakovich. Where's Dan, athletic director? Come on, Dan. Get up here, Dan. <laughs> Coach Dabo Sweeney. Everybody knows Dabo. Is he doing a good job, Dan? You're going to keep him for this season? Uh -huh. You're satisfied with his results, right? I would think. And all of the incredible players here, and you are incredible athletes, incredible players, congratulations on your stunning victory against a great team and your second national championship in three years. Pretty incredible. Joining us today, we have a few of our biggest fans. Secretary of the Treasury, Steve Mnuchin, who's doing a fantastic Where's Steve? Couldn't make your team. He would never be able to make your team, that I can tell you. Acting Attorney General Matt Whitaker, who's a great player. He was in the Rose Bowl, actually. Matt Whitaker right here. I won't tell you whether he won or lost in the Rose Bowl, but they played a good game, right? And he's a, he was a great football player. Senator Lindsey Graham. Lindsey. Acting Secretary of Defense, Pat Shanahan, a big fan of yours, too. Pat. 
Another great friend of mine and Lindsay's and everybody and a highly respected man, big football fan, Tim Scott. Senator Tim Scott. Thank you, Tim. Thanks. Congressman Jeff Duncan. Thank you, Jeff. Great. Hi, Jeff. Also with us is our new Chief of Staff and a former Congressman from the great state of South Carolina, Mick Mulvaney. He's doing a fantastic job. Thank you, Mick. And we have a lot of other great politicians here, great successful politicians. And I have to say, what you've done is uh, very inspiring to a lot of people, to everybody. The Clemson Tiger football team has earned its place in the history books as the first team since 1897 to finish the season with an undefeated 15-0 record. 18. Can you imagine that? That's a long time ago, Coach. <laughs> yeah, just do as well next year. That's going to do. That is, that is really 1897. The senior players on the team have won 55 games over the past four years. An incredible fact. You're tied with the Alabama seniors for the most wins in Division I history. And the biggest win of all came in the final game between these two titans. They are titans. With a jaw dropping 44 to 16, Clemson win over the Alabama Crimson Tide. And Alabama went in and they felt confident. But boy, right from the beginning, the job you did. Trevor Lawrence, where's Trevor? Trevor Lawrence. There's Trevor. That's what I thought. Showed why he's among the best in college football despite being a 19-year-old true freshman, throwing for 347 yards, three touchdowns, and no interceptions. And by the way, as I remember, a couple of not bad runs, right? They said you're a great athlete, aside from everything else, and you're also an accurate thrower. It's nice to see. This season, he racked up more than 3,200 yards in the air, which is tremendous. And it's certainly not a bad way to start a college career. Has there ever been a start like this of a college career for a quarterback coach? I think as a freshman, that's pretty good, right? I so. Yeah, I think the coach is satisfied. He feels good. <laughs> Trevor, he likes you, okay? You'll be — I don't think you're worried about — he's not being — he's not worried about being beat out next season, I don't think, at the beginning. I don't think so. Although, there are probably a couple of guys in here, Trevor, you got to be careful, right? They're probably — who's gunning for him? Who? Who's the hands? <laughs> A couple of guys. Oh, look at them. I know how that stuff works. That's all right. Good luck to everybody. Hey, lots of luck right now. It's a little great. The good news for Clemson fans is that he won't be eligible for the NFL draft for another two years. Okay? Good. Great career. Wide receiver. I watched you. Hunter Renfro began his career. Where's Hunter? Hunter. Great. Great job, Hunter. As a walk-on, he finished it with two receptions in the championship game, and he was drawing coverage all over the place, wasn't he? I could see that. They were talking about it. They were all over you. Drawing coverage anywhere he went on the field, which made it a lot easier for some of the other folks. So, great job. Great job, Hunter. Fantastic. Defensive coordinated coordinator Brent Venables is here today. Where's Brent? Where's Brent? Wow. I'll tell you, he didn't get a very good location here. It's, are you okay back there, Brent? Okay. <laughs> Three times your defense stopped Alabama cold in the red zone. True. An incredible feat. A feat that people said couldn't happen. Alabama averaged 48 points per game this season. Clemson's defense held them to just 16 in the championship game. Amazing. Cornerback, A.J. Terrell. Played a leading role with eight tackles, a forced fumble, and a big 44-yard interception return for a touchdown that put Clemson on the board and set a course and really set the course for the game right from the beginning. Coach Sweeney says that all of us have greatness inside of us, no matter who we are or where we come from. And, gentlemen, you proved that so much this season, the entire season, not just the one game. One game was incredible, but you proved it over a full season. No bad moments. It takes a special leader to bring out the greatness in others. Dabo Sweeney is just that kind of a leader. I knew that when I met him two years ago. I said, this guy's a special guy. He inspires. He's a, a very uh, unique guy, isn't he? So. Really a so. unique guy. 
And uh, he's getting a little embarrassed over here. That's, it's true, Coach. It's true. So Coach Sweeney has brought Clemson eight consecutive 10-win seasons. And I know the competition that you have. Three Bear Bryant Coach of the Year awards, and now a third national championship. And that's uh, really incredible, really incredible. The uh, most important thing is he's helped countless young Americans set high standards for themselves, reach for excellence, and achieve their full God-given potential. After the championship game, Dabo, something was really, truly profound. People saw. He said, when you get a young group of people that believe, that are passionate, that love each other, that's six foot nine and weigh 397 pounds of pure muscle. He didn't say that, by the way. That's, I add that, okay? You know, that helps too, Coach, right? I mean, in all fairness, that helps. That sacrifice, that are committed to a singleness of purpose, you better look out, great things can happen. And that's what happened. Incredible people. You'll always go down as winners, the biggest winners, 15 and 0. What a beautiful message for our country. If we believe in each other, if we love each other, if we are committed to making life better for all of our citizens, then great things will always happen for America. We know Coach Sweeney is right because you proved it with your incredible victory, and really your incredible victories over a long period of time, not even this season. So to all of the amazing athletes here today, that wiped out more food than any human being has ever seen before, including me. I've never seen so much. Thank you for inspiring America. You really have, fellas, you inspired our country. That was a, an inspiration. Tim Scott, Lindsey Graham, all of you here. I think that was a great uh, congressman, right? That was an inspiration for our country, especially from two senators that happened to come from your state. They were very happy. I will tell you, they were very, very happy people, very proud. Congratulations once again to the national champions, the Clemson Tigers, one of the best teams ever in the history of college football. Now I'm proud to introduce your coach, Coach Sweeney, and your university president, Jim Clements. Very special people. You know, it's very funny. I meet people and I say, hello, how you doing? Everything good? See ya. Best of luck. And that's the end. I remember these two people. They're very special people. And they proved that by winning like nobody else has been able to win. And by the way, Clemson is also a great, great school. So thank you very much for being at the White House. It's a very special place, built in 1799. And uh, it just has a special feel about it. It's just really a, an incredible, an incredible a building. It's an incredible home. Thank you all. It's your home. Thank you very much for being here. And Coach, please say a few words. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, uh, for this opportunity. What a fun day uh, it's been. It's an honor to be a part of this tradition. And uh, to be honest with you, it's really cool that football can create an opportunity like this. Uh, and I stand here before you as a guy from Pelham, Alabama, and I'm looking at all these young people from all over this country. Um, and I, I, I have to look at my mom, because uh, I came to Washington, D.C. on a train in the fifth grade, and she, we didn't, she didn't have enough money to come with me. Uh, but here we are now, many, many years later, and we're getting to have a chance to have a moment like this. So, you know, football matters. And uh, football and the relationships through football created this opportunity. And uh, for that, I'm so thankful. It's been an unbelievably crazy week, uh, literally a crazy week. Uh, but uh, it's great to receive this recognition and see this team honored for its amazing season. One week ago today, uh, as a matter of fact, you know, we were at the stadium getting ready to, getting ready to go. But getting ready to kick it off. But one week ago today, we all enjoyed a magical and historic moment as our team became the first 15-0 team in modern football history. And one of the things that we talked about, and you guys know, is, you know, we, we say all the time, greatness is, is 
not your destiny. Greatness is not your right. It's a decision. You know, we, we always say championships are won when the stands are empty. Champions are made when nobody's watching. And uh, this team, this team right here made a decision to be great and was special from day one. We had our goals, and y'all all know what our goals are, but more importantly, our daily commitment was greater than those goals. And that's what it takes to do something special. And our staff, and all of our staff is here, what an amazing job our staff did. Uh, it says in Proverbs that, that, that uh, where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And we've been so consistent at Clemson because I've got a multitude of good counselors, a lot of good people, unbelievable staff, great continuity, a bunch of great young people that buy in and choose to, to be about the right things and to think the right way and, and to lay it on the line for their university and for each other. And people talk a lot about X's and O's in, in, in my business. You know, we talk a lot about X's and O's, but this game to me is really about hearts and souls. And uh, last Monday, you saw on full display the heart and soul of this team. They played with a will to win that just would not be denied. And one of the things that we talk about all the time in Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, you do it with all your heart. Doesn't matter, I mean, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you do it with all your heart. Because when you do things with your heart, you go above and beyond. You do the extra. And this team, they put their heart into it, and they went above and beyond in every area. We always say the fun is in the winning, and it is in the winning. But to me, it's how you win that matters the most. On the field, hey, 15-0, there's really not else you can say. We had 13 of those wins by 20 points or more. Our seniors, 55 wins in a four-year period, most in the history of college football. We had the number one scoring defense in the country, and we had the most points ever scored in Clemson history. But off the field, so it's not just winning, it's how you win. Off the field, this very same team that set out to be the best ever, they had the best ever team GPA in the history of our, of our Clemson program. We had 66 guys make a 3.0 or better. Our record previously was 56. They shattered it. They went above and beyond in every area. We won the AFCA Academic Award number one out of 130 teams. We won the top academic award awarded by the American Football Coaches Association. And then in, in New York back in December, Christian Wilkins won the Academic Heisman, which goes to the top student athlete in all levels of football. So when I tell you this team was committed to excellence in all areas, they were truly committed. And in the end, that's what we're all going to be defined by. That's what our program's going to be defined by. Not by these trophies. Our program's going to be defined by the type of men that leave our program and what they do when they get out in the society, the type of future presidents they become, and governors and CEOs and coaches and teachers and NFL players, whatever it is, that's what our program is going to be defined by. We had a quote that we kind of lived by. We started the season, kind of talked about this quote. I don't know who said it, but it says this. It says, what you can vividly imagine and ardently believe and enthusiastically act upon will inevitably come to be. This team dreamed big, they believed big, and last Monday you saw them enthusiastically act upon that dream and belief. But my favorite part of this team, and what I will always remember, is that they truly enjoyed the journey. I can't tell you how many times we kind of hit pause. A lot of times with young people, everybody wants to hit fast forward. But this team, we hit pause a lot and really, truly enjoyed the journey. And it really made it so much special, more special for me. And in the end, that's what it should be about. Just finding joy in the journey of whatever it is that we're doing. So I want to close, and I really want to give this perspective to our team and really to anybody who's listening. This is a quote. And uh, the, the whole college football world was captured by Tyler Trent. He was the Purdue football fan that was battling cancer. You probably saw that. He just passed just, just recently. And here's, here's what he said. He put out, a, he put out a, a, a quote. And he said, though I am in hospice, though I am in hospice care and have to wake up every morning knowing that the day might be my last, I still have a choice to make to make that day the best it can be. Yet isn't that a choice we all have every day? After all, nobody knows 
the amount of days that we have left. Some could say we are all in hospice to a certain degree. So why don't we act like it? Where is your gratitude? With Christmas coming up, what are you thankful for? I had to write my will recently, and I'm just thankful that I can give my family Christmas presents. Maybe even for the last time. Let's not forget that my doctors gave me three months to live almost two and a half months ago. So why can't we live grateful lives? Why can't we make every day count like it's the last? So for this team and all you guys moving on, and even the guys coming back, that's what I would say is go live and be great today. In order for your someday to become a reality, you just got to be your best today and truly enjoy the journey because I always believe the best is yet to come. So President Trump, I can't thank you enough for this very special opportunity um, and all the dignitaries here to, to honor our football team on something that we earned and something that happened uh, all the way on the other coast in California uh, one week ago. What a special moment we'll remember for the rest of our lives. But uh, it pales in comparison to the relationships and the journey that it took to get there. But uh, on behalf of our team, our staff, the Board of Trustees, our President, and our AD, I want to thank you so much for this opportunity thank that you, you gave us. It, thank you. Thank you, Coach, for those kind words. Thank you, Mr. President, for your kind and inspirational words. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, for being here. Good evening. Go Tigers. I'm only stepping up because the President asked me to come on up, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and add to my thanks. Uh, Mr. President, it is great to be back at the White House for the second time in the past 19 months with our football team to celebrate our national championship. Mr. President, I appreciate very much your kindness and your hospitality and the fine dinner that you served us and for inviting us to be with you today. It is an honor and a privilege to be standing here in the White House as we celebrate the accomplishments of this amazing group of men who represent Clemson so well on and off the field. I do want to thank, if I can, Mr. President, our Board of Trustees for their outstanding leadership. We're blessed at Clemson to have an incredible board who cares deeply about Clemson academics and athletics. So I do want to thank the entire South Carolina congressional delegation for their strong support of our great university. And I know, Mr. President, you pointed them out. But in particular, I do want to thank Senator Lindsey Graham and Senator Tim Scott for being here this evening and for always supporting us. I also want to thank Congressman Jeff Duncan, a proud Clemson alumnus and former Clemson football player who does an outstanding job in our home district. Would you please help me thank them for all they do for the university? And Mr. President, I do also want to thank our Governor Henry McMaster for his leadership over our great state. The governor was not able to join us tonight due to a scheduling conflict, but he did want me to pass on to you his warm regards. Tonight, we honor these young men and these coaches who are a wonderful example of the high standards we set in everything that we do at Clemson, from athletics to academics. These student athletes, as you know, worked incredibly hard to accomplish their dream of being the number one college football team and the only one in the modern era to go a perfect 15-0. and 0. And I want you to know, gentlemen, you made the Clemson family very proud along that journey. And Mr. President, our players succeed in the classroom as well. We had 26 players on this team who earned their degree. That was more than any other team to play in a bowl game. And this championship, as I said on Saturday, was truly a team victory from our student athletes who work so hard on the field and in practice, to our coaches, to our recruiting staff, to the social media team, to our faculty, to the academic advisors in the Neary Center, to the medical staff and trainers, to the facilities team, to the support staff, to our donors, and all of those who worked in any way, shape, or form for this program, all of them played an important role in making this happen. And of course, I'm very thankful that this team is led by Coach Dabo Sweeney, a man of great integrity and of the highest character who is on a serious mission that goes beyond football. And he cares so very deeply about developing his players and a young men who will be successful in life. And I do want to acknowledge and thank our outstanding athletic director, Dan Radakovich. His leadership has taken Clemson Athletics 
to the highest level possible. Coach Sweeney has a motto that all of you know, many of us at the university have adopted that, and that is best is the standard. At Clemson, we strive every day to live up to that standard across the entire university. The success of our football team and athletics in general has helped to elevate the entire profile of our great university. We're at an all-time high on almost every possible measure from academic rankings to applications to retention rates, graduation rates, fundraising, research funding, ACT scores, SAT scores, and so many other measures. We are determined, all of us in this room and back at the university, to keep pushing every single day to make a difference and to take Clemson to greater heights in service to our students, to our home state of South Carolina, and to this great country. Thank you again, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you for recognizing the Clemson University National Championship team. May God bless you all and go Tigers. And as your president said, that president, he has done some job. We can never forget the great job he's done as a school, as a university. It's a fantastic, a fantastic place with an unbelievable reputation on its own. I think uh, we're going to take the entire football team down to a, another special place, the Oval Office. And uh, I remember two years ago, I, two years ago, Coach, we did that. and. A lot of other presidents don't do that, and we did it, and uh, it, it seemed to have worked, right? <laughs> Whatever right. it was, because they all wanted to come back. Right. But so we're going to go. We're going to take the team down. I thought before I did that, I'd ask Senator Lindsey Graham, Senator Tim Scott, two people that have represented your state very, very well, and that love your team, and uh, very, very special friends of mine. So maybe I'll start off with Tim and Lindsey and uh, say a couple of words, and we're going to travel down to a very, very important location, the Oval Office. Okay, we'll do that. We'll take pictures. Good? He likes that. Good. Please, Tim. Well, God bless you. How many of you guys are incredibly excited to be at the White House? <laughs> How many of you are looking forward to going down to the Oval Office? How about, we all, how about we all give President Trump an amazing round of applause for being here tonight? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My comments will be quick. South Carolina is so proud of Clemson University, and specifically the athletes who represent us so well off the field as much as you do on the field. I can't say it any better than Dabble said it himself a few weeks ago. Maybe it was championship night. He said, if you put God first, others second, and then yourself, amazing things can happen. This is the fulfillment of that mission. Thank you very much. Well, they said be short. I started this speech short, and I'll end it short. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you can tell this is an educated crowd. Uh, so I grew up in central South Carolina. Anybody know where that's at? Yeah. yeah. So when the Tigers played, it was good. My dad owned the liquor store. So every Saturday was good for business. Uh, I went to Pelham, Alabama on vacation, Debo. So Tim has an incredible story. Mr. President, you have an incredible story, but these young men here, you have a story that nobody else can tell. Go Tigers. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Tim. So, Coach, let's go on down to the Oval, and uh, if the team would just follow, I'm going to say follow your coach. We'll follow your coach, but let's go to the Oval. Let's take some really great pictures that you're going to have for a long time, a long time. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. A tremendous honor. Thank you. Thank you.